Music Organized Presentation. My name is Daphne. Is everyone feeling good tonight? Yeah. Right, that's good to hear. Now before I start the show, I have three important messages I need to share with all of you. First message, take a look at the three staircases we have in the amphitheater. Once the show starts, please remain seated. As animals will be coming out from all, all, all over, over this amphitheater. Right, so please remain seated until I say thank you and good night. Now the second announcement, the animals that come out may look very cute, very adorable, and very tempting to touch. Now please do not reach out and touch them as they only recognize their trainers. However, if you do decide to touch them, they will not hesitate to let you know how they feel. I'm talking about sharp teeth and claws, right? So keep your hands to yourself so we can have a safe and fun show. Now the third and most important message of all, as you know, we are on the night safari, so most of the animals here are nocturnal. So that means any sudden lights or bright flashes will startle our animals. So you know what to do? Everyone take out your phones, cameras, recording devices. Please make sure your flashes are switched off, all right? And since this is a very important message, I wanna get it across to every single one of you in this amphitheater. I notice a lot of you are from all over the world, so I'll be doing a few different translations of the no-flash photography role. The creatures of the night will be on the prowl. As night falls, two worlds, one of sunlight, the other moonlight blend into one. Animals like the tiny banded mongoose search for that last bit of food before heading home to sleep. Digging with his sharp claws, he searches for his favorites. Insects, worms, snails, and even the prize eggs. When satisfied, he'll return to his big mongoose family and curl up in a safe burrow for the night. As daytime animals settle down to sleep, the forest comes to life. Hidden amongst the shadows, nocturnal animals emerge from the dark silhouettes of the forest. With a body striped to provide perfect camouflage, a fishing cat appears along the riverbank. This cat loves to swim and dive underwater. water. He wears a layer of short hair so dense that water cannot penetrate. This layer keeps him warm and dry even in trees. Fishing cats are rapidly disappearing due to habitat loss and poaching. They deserve our protection before these quiet hunters disappear forever. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the world of the night hunters. I've often been asked, how do nocturnal animals survive? Well, all of them have unique adaptations to survive in the forest. For example, the owls. Tonight we have two gorgeous owls joining us on these two staircases. Let's take a look at this owl here first. This is Rainbow, or Great Horned Owl with Eliza. Great Horned Owls, also known as the tigers in disguise, are one of the largest species of owls you can find in the North and South American continent. And let's not forget the very vocal Midnight, the Malay Fish Owl with James. Malay Fish Owls, also known as Buffy Fish Owls, are native to Southeast Asia. In fact, they're one of the most common owls you can find right here in Singapore. Now, did you know that owls are one of the quietest raptors in the world? Yes? No? Yes, well, Midnight is going to prove just that tonight. So everyone, please remain seated. 
focus your attention over to midnight, and above all, remain quiet. Whenever you're ready, midnight. Hi, sir, please remain seated. Sir, the yellow shirt, please remain seated. Thank you very much. That was an amazing flight, midnight. Now when midnight flew over your heads, apart from her screeching sound, did you hear any sound at all coming from her wings? No. No, that is right. This is because of her softened wingtips, which enable her to glide silently over fields and meadows, and her prey will not even hear her coming. But right, well, I have another question to ask all of you, and I'm going to need answers, all right? How many degrees do you think an owl can rotate its head? 360, any more? 180, any more answers? 270. Well, the correct answer actually is 270 degrees. Yes, this is possible because of their 14 neck vertebrae. That is twice as much as ours. This means that their necks are very long and very flexible, and this enables them to turn their heads up to three quarters of a circle. All right, that is about all the time we have tonight for our two owls. So let's give them a big round of applause. This is Rainbow, the great horned owl with Eliza, and this is Midnight, the Malay fish owl with James. Thank you. But he's gonna come out very, very soon. Come on out, Foxtrot. And there he is, everybody. Foxtrot is our Fennec Fox, and here we have Rebby, our wonderful trainer. Now, Fennec Foxes can be found in the Sahara Desert in Africa, and that beautiful sandy coat helps them to camouflage in the desert even better. Fennec foxes can jump up to 1 meter high and spring forward up to 1.2 meters. Now just another gentle reminder, please make sure your flashes are switched off. Thank you very much. Alright, and if you can see, they always have really big ears. Those big ears help him to expel the excess heat away from his body in the blazing desert. And also helps him to listen up for prey hiding underground. And famous hunter from the African continent. This animal possesses a key sense of smell and is able to detect carcasses from many miles away. This is the spotted hyena. Spotted hyenas have strong, powerful jaws that can crush the bones of even elephants. They also have excellent digestive systems and they can digest their entire prey, including their skin, teeth, bones, horns, and even the hooves. Spotted hyenas are the largest species of hyena in the world. Fully grown, they can reach up to 1.83 meters tall. Now that is the average height of a human man. Hyenas are a type of canine due to their resemblance to dogs. They are Don't get confused, this is not our animal. Alright, this is Eliza once again, our wonderful trainer. I'm waiting for our special guest. We are expecting Bandit our Servo! There he is. They use their long slender forepaws to hook out their food, and they also have very powerful hind legs which enable them to leap up high into the air to catch a low flying bird that is slow to take off. Let's see tonight, looking at the target, and there we go! Look at that jump, everybody! Thank you, Bennett and Eliza. Eggs, uh, it's a relatively small, harmless animal. All right, uh, don't, don't panic. Okay, let me just look over here. Hi, sorry, um, this, this row, uh, okay, not here. So sorry. Oh, what's that? What's that? What's that? Nice shoes. James, oh my good, I'm, I'm so sorry. Man. Are you okay? James, can you look for an animal, please? Can you? Oh my goodness, what, what is going on? What's that? What? What? James? Uh, oh, um, two, two, two people to help. Uh, okay, 
you know what? James needs help. So you know, I need two volunteers, all right? I need adults, please, over the age of 18. Okay, well, what about uh, you, ma'am? Okay, maybe a man from this side. A man, okay, you, you sit in a white shirt. Okay, come on up. Okay, into the dark. Yes, a little faster. Come on, emergency. All right, into the dark. Follow James. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, James, I got the help you needed. That's like, what, floor dolls? I'm sure we can handle it. This is a live show, so these things do happen. Uh, we have trained professionals at the back, so everything should be fine. Um, it's, okay, is, is anything? Uh, James, it's a little dark, I can't really see. Um, it's just a small harmless animal. I think they're gonna bring it out to show it to you guys. Uh, it's really cute, so no need to worry. Uh, James. It's getting a little awkward outside. Uh, oh, what? Whoa, okay, wait, it's way bigger than I thought it was. Everybody, let's meet Maggie! Python. Burmese rock pythons are the fifth largest species of python in the world. Specimens can reach lengths of up to 9 meters long and weigh up to 90 kilograms. And now, let's get to know our volunteers. Hi sir, what is your name? Kushal. Kushal, where are you from? Canada. All the way from Canada, everybody! Alright, now what I need you to do, take out this arm, have a feel of Maggie. Yes, tell me. Is she smooth and dry or wet and slimy? Smooth and dry. Smooth and dry, that's right. Now help me support the snake. Snakes are actually very smooth and very dry. They only appear wet and slimy due to the light glistening off their scales, giving them their beautiful glossy sheen. And now let's get to know you, ma'am. What is your name? Ujita. Ujita, where are you from? India. All the way from India, everybody! Wow. All right. Now, since you came from so far away, we're going to give you a nice treat. All right, Derek? All right. Oh, no, 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 that, that's a bit too close, Derek, all right? Now, I'm sure you've got a good look at the size of Maggie's head. Tell me, as compared to the size of her head, how many times do you think she can open up her mouth to? Choose any number from two to maybe 500. Any number? 50. 50? Yeah. Right, well, this is a snake, not a dinosaur, all right? So maybe choose something a little lower. Uh, 10. Say five. Five. five, correct answer! She got it! Now snakes can actually open their mouths up to five times the size of their heads. What pythons like Maggie do is they strike at their prey, constrict around it, and then swallow it whole. Now with everyone on stage looking gorgeous, let's all take pictures, alright? Now let's look over this side. Derek, James, and Candy, meet me, hold Alright, I think you guys did an amazing job. You guys agree? Come on, did you see the size of that snake? Do you guys agree? So I'm not going to let you leave empty-handed. Both of you get limited edition, nice safari badges from all of us. Thank you very much. A great volunteers from Canada and India. If you know anyone who has any snakes, uh, hello, excuse me. Um, everyone, this is Toffee, our common raccoon. What are you doing here? It's not your turn. Hello, sir. You like to say hello? Okay, well, raccoons come in a lot of different colors. Black, gray, brown, red, and even gorgeous shades of cream. Yes, home is that way, Mr. Toffee, sir. All right, he seems to have found something. And off you go. All right, let's all say bye, Toffee. A very special appearance. All right, unfortunately, raccoons like Toffee have been regarded as pests in other countries, but it is not entirely their fault. Our towns and cities have come too close to their natural habitat and this forces them to come into our homes to feed and survive. So that kind of make, makes me wonder, what kind of trash do we throw away that feeds these animals? Okay, let's look over here. We've got three plastic bottles. We have two tin cans. And we have a paper carton. All these things come from nature in one way or another and they all have one more thing in common. That is, they can be re- Come on, you can say that a little louder. They can be recycled. That is right. And I'm going to call out two of my very faithful assistants, Bailey and Bubbles. 
to show us what they can do to save the environment. Right, they can realize that with a very noisy recycling bin. Now, Bailey and Bubbles are actually our Asian small pod otters, and they are the smallest of their kind. They're actually only three years old, all right, and they're both sisters, so they get really playful at the back, but they're gonna come out very, very soon, and here they are, everybody! Okay, Bubbles, you're on my team, we're doing the tin cans. Drop it in. Come on, Bubbles. Drop it in. There you go, okay. Come on, Bubbles, you can be a little faster, a little faster this time. Come on, you can do it. Drop it in. Drop it in. Drop it in. Come on. There you go. All right. Now we have two tin cans, three plastic bottles, and the paper card. Um, Eliza. Eliza. Okay. Well, you know what? This is nothing we can't handle, right? So where does this go? Help me out over here. Does this go in um this bin? No. This is going here. This is going here. Yes. Otters are very small, but they carry a huge message. And that is we can help to reduce, reuse, and recycle. Well, our journey through tonight is coming to an end, but let's not forget the lessons that we learned tonight. From the owl in the sky, to the snake on the forest floor, to the raccoons in the trees. They want to remind us to protect their cousins in the wild and the fragile environments that they call home. What you do makes a difference, and you must decide what kind of difference you want to make. Because the greatest threat to our planet is the belief that someone else is going to save it for us. Thank you all for joining us here at the night safari and to the creatures of the night presentation. My name is Stephanie. I hope you all had an amazing time. Thank you. Take care.